Sonic's money transfer is giving you an unbeatable offer this Tobaski. Your family and friends can now send you monies from the whole of Europe, US, Canada and Switzerland for absolutely free. Yay! Yes! This Tobaski enjoy our safe, fast, reliable and convenient money transfer service with the largest payout network in the Gambia at zero transfer charges. So your family and friends wouldn't have to worry about transfer charges when sending you monies from Europe, USA, Canada and Switzerland this Tobaski. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Support your own. Tabaski just got better with Supersonics Money Transfer. Greetings, greetings, greetings to the Gambian people, greetings to Africans, wherever you are, whether in your respective nations or in the diaspora, we say welcome to another fresh edition of the platform called The Motivation. This is a platform that is meant to inspire and motivate the current generation of young Africans in the actualization of their respective dreams and preaching the message of peace and national unity, as well as revitalizing the Africanization policy that speaks about good governance, social justice, democracy, human rights, and most importantly, the African unity. And for today's edition of the Motivational Platform, we are honored, should I say, very privileged to be in a live conversation here with uh, Miss Fatu Elikamaloshi. She's a broadcast journalist with the uh, State TV called YRTS. Uh, welcome to this platform. Thank you so much for having me, Mikael. That's, <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, those quickly following us from uh, East Africa, that is uh, uh, Tanzania and uh, Nairobi, Kenya, we say to you, Jumbo, Jumbo, in Swahili language, we say, Nakupenda, Pia, we say, Heshima, Kwad, East Africa, that's respect to East Africa. We say, Asante, Kwa Masara, when you quit to see it too. Those in the Rwanda, in the Ichigwanda language, say, Abagwanda, Nabakunda, Moeze. To the Yoruba speaking region of Nigeria, we say, Bao Nisha, Ututu Jometa, Bao Lomo. To the eastern part of the country, we say to you, one name, the number, Ikaraka, Iji, Mechuku, Abiyam, Amama, Masi, Amasi, Oshimida, Tata, Iku, Mechuku, Kige, strengthen you all, wherever you are, under the sound of my voice, to the Gambian people, the Mantega, Abiyam, 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 a lot of people know you in this very country. Uh, you are not a strange face. But for purpose of our diverse audience, there are people listening to you like Masli Mananga from uh, Zimbabwe. You have a mighty from South Africa and other Liberians. <laughs> Drive us through mm -hmm. who is Fatu Elika Maloshi from early life to academic and professional life. Oh, wow. Um, it's, it's huge. Yeah. Such a small girl about a lot of experiences mm. and a lot of, you know, processes mm -hmm. a lot of places to go to and a yeah. lot of things to overcome mm -hmm. um, but like you said my name is Fatu Elika Maloshi okay. and I was born in here mm -hmm. Abuko okay. um, this is where region one stopped actually when okay. you say Abuko people tend to term mm -hmm. it as region two west coast but it's part of KMC okay. and I was born to a Gambian mother and a Zambian father okay. and I think that's that's where the confusion comes because a lot of people are always asking oh Maloshi is it's such a strange name yeah. but yeah my dad is Zambian mm. and so I was brought up by both parents okay. um, to a point mm. um, up to my grade around grade 7 grade 8 okay. when my dad fell sick and had to go back to Zambia to get proper treatment okay. you know and so I was raised by our mom mm. to a point I attended those group of schools mm. all the way through to my high school okay. and high school was a very you know interesting point for me mm. because it was a moment of growth. Okay. I attended a lot of organizations as well. I was part of Young People in the Media. A lot of people know, knew me through Young People in the Media, through my advocacy, okay. you know, child's right advocacy, young mm. people talking about burning issues mm. over the radio. Mm. And I came to Ndaos High with that zeal and commitment as well. Uh, I was there, I took up a lot of responsibilities from school prefect to head girl mm. while I was doing young people in the media at the same time okay. as a vice president mm. and eventually became interim president. Okay. And along the line, when I finished my high school, mm. I took up an internship okay. at the Gambia Radio and Television Services okay. and as well enrolled in the University of the Gambia. Okay. 
where I studied for four years, mm. um, journalism, school of journalism and digital media. Mm. I was enrolled in that school. Mm. And Alhamdulillah, now I have wrapped up my exams. Graduating senior. Yes, we're graduating mm. um, in January because wow. you know every, like graduation is once every yes, year at the university. Yeah. So we're just wrapping up our thesis, our research work. Okay. And then, yeah, that, that's where I am right mm. now to sum it up. Mm. That's beautiful. <laughs> you heard that from the house house's mouth. She just drove us through her life and uh, it's a beautiful experience to uh, have her right here on the platform here, the motivational platform. We are in her residence. We're talking about Fatu Eli Kamaloshi. Uh, quickly, why growing up? Uh, when did you realize that you had a zest of becoming a, uh, a journalist, especially at this very beautiful HLO now? You know, I always say this part of my story and that growing up, I used to ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. My aunts were not taking me to places. They were not taking me to events or weddings, family gatherings. Because whenever I go, I am always curious. I want to know why that woman is carrying that pan, why that kid is not wearing shoes. I was always asking all these questions. And when, my, when I go out with my mom in the streets, mm -hmm. I'm always asking, why is that woman carrying that bananas? Why, those bananas? Why is that woman doing this? Mm -hmm. And my aunts and the people I grew up around with, you know, were always telling me that you ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. You should be a journalist. That's an attribute of journalism. You know? Okay. So I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just asking questions. Okay. Okay. For some reason, my mom felt I was just some... Um, you know, I was just a different kind of child mm. she had at mm. that point. Mm. But so I think at that point she she saw the, you know, th that urge of asking questions in me. She she saw the need, you know, the the, the, the fact that I always wanted to know things. Yeah. So also she saw that in a way she called me smart yeah. because I wanted to know about okay. everything. Okay. So um, growing up, I did not even think about what I wanted to become. Mm -hmm. I did not think about becoming a journalist, but I knew one thing was certain. Mm -hmm. And that was the fact that, you know, my mom, my aunts, the people yeah. I grew up around with, yeah. the people that groomed me, mm -hmm. always put that thought in my head mm -hmm. that you asked a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. You should be a journalist. Okay. And one time my dad also, we were talking, I, I recall it was outside. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he told me that he wanted me to be on the radio because he used to listen to this West Coast and he used to hear these young kids who were there and okay. were talking. Okay. You know, they were very smart kids. Yeah. My dad also did broadcasting okay. at a point in his life, okay. something I didn't know until mm. now. Mm. And, you know, he told me he wanted me to be on radio okay. and be talking like those kids. He okay. wanted me to be talking about issues okay. and be expressing myself. Okay. I didn't know how I was going to do that. Mm. But I just knew that all of a sudden mm -hmm. I, you know, joined an organization called Young People in the Media through my best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, they came to my school now mm -hmm. and then they were talking about the association. And my friend was there at the mm -hmm. time and mm -hmm. said, why not? Let's join. Mm -hmm. So we joined okay. and along the line, we realized that they were using the media okay. to advocate for the rights of children. Okay. And so I saw myself going to radio every Sunday mm -hmm. and all of a sudden my da dad's dream okay. was starting it's coming. Reality. Yeah, it, it was starting to come together. Okay. And I recall the first day he had me over the radio, yeah. he had to give me $10. See, at that time, it was such a big thing for, wow. <laughs> for me because he was just happy, yeah, you know. Yeah. And that was how it all started, mm. you know, being in the media mm. until when I eventually took up an internship with Jati Mm -hmm. and then everything started mm -hmm. coming together. Okay, at, at, at that infancy level of your journalistic study, so to speak, uh, what were the challenges that you faced at that point in time? I mean, I, it was not really easy. Mm -hmm. um, it was not, but I, I, I found myself lucky in a lot of ways okay. because already I had, a, I had radio experience okay. and, you know, I, I found myself in a different place though because it was TV mm -hmm. and then you realize that you know you, you were so young I came there with other girls mm -hmm. uh, Betty and Sukai we were the, we okay. were the only interns at that time until Fanny came okay. and so but I was lucky at that point I wouldn't say I faced obstacles okay. because we had seniors who were very much open mm -hmm. to teaching us mm -hmm. and we were also open to mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. especially myself I'm, mm -hmm. I'm always ready to take on new tasks okay. I'm always ready to take on new challenges yeah. I've always find myself mm. in that kind of situation. Mm. So we had seniors who were always open to teaching us mm. and they would sometimes take us live on air. And we, I remember the breakfast show, we were there and sometimes we had to come and do segments. Okay. And I was always the vocal one, okay. like always ready to yeah. talk yeah. and would be assigned to go out mm. and mm. do vox pops. Mm. So it was like we were giving a whole lot of responsibilities. Mm. We were giving a whole lot of roles. Mm. And I think that that was a little bit 
come some other point yeah, yeah. because you saw yourself all of a sudden taking yeah. on so many tasks yeah. but if you were ready for it you had to take on mm -hmm. responsibilities mm -hmm. and for me i wasn't sure what i wanted but along the line it was trying it was beginning to manifest okay. and i kind of realized that this is a path i could grow in mm -hmm. and i needed to take on the responsibilities mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. i had to be open mm -hmm. to 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 the put to the responsibilities and take on the tasks okay. because i saw myself growing in it and for the fact that I was enrolled in the University School of Journalism yeah. as well, okay. I had to be serious in this domain as well because it was opening my eyes mm. to, to, the, to the bigger part of this career. Mm. Because in school we're doing the theory mm. and at work during the internship mm. we're doing the practical aspect. Mm. So it wasn't difficult for me trying to merge these two areas, yeah. my academic life, my professional life, mm. which like you said was at an infant state yeah. at yeah. that moment yeah. during my um, internship yeah but i would say it was it, it was an easy right okay. it wasn't very much difficult Marshall. yes but also you know you you challenges always come of along course. the way yeah, sure you realize that growing you have to also grow yeah. yourself yeah, of course. you know professionally as yeah. a person mm. and i realized that a lot has changed to mashallah that's beautiful you hear right from her if you're not following the conversation right now you're missing a lot i don't know if you provided your point <laughs> okay that's beautiful that's beautiful yes. was here she's far too elegant although she that's my guest on the motivational platform here <laughs> let's come back um, from the parental perspective you you got the morals uh, so between your mom and dad who deserve the higher salute <laughs> for such beautiful morals? oh my god you put me in a very That's, funny situation yeah, yeah. this is a tight one um sometimes i see myself like I, like i say again lucky okay because though my parents are all both africans mm -hmm. but they come from different countries yeah they come from different, different backgrounds, backgrounds, different cultures, and, all. and I see myself as someone who was raised from different worlds, from okay. both worlds, okay. even though they're all from African, mm -hmm. you know, descent. And yeah. I feel like my dad is from Zambia, yes, yeah. but he is super educated. Mm. He he's super duper educated. Mm. He's he's a develop, developmental expert, okay. um, and he's worked with a lot of organizations okay. grassroots organizations okay. and he came here mm. through international appointment mm. you know took on a job with the, uh, the UNDP mm. and he has worked with local government here in the Gambia okay. the KMC's mm. you know and a whole lot of them that is why a lot of people know him because mm. he has worked with a lot of grassroots mm. so he's got that exposure okay. combined with his Academics, okay. you know, he he's he's so much learned. Mm. I, I look at him as an elf. Okay. My mom is also also educated, okay. but not to the level <laughs> like okay. level of my dad okay. because my dad got degrees. Okay. You know, degrees. You yes. Mean. Yeah. <laughs> so he's super educated. Okay. So when it comes to my academic, both of them are super concerned about that. Mm. Like I cannot come second. Mm. I have to be top of the class. Okay. I did not have any option. Okay. My dad was understanding in a sense that he looks at you mm. and he's so much concerned mm. about your your well-being your psychological well-being mm. and your mental state mm. so if you come third in the class mm. my dad wants to encourage you and mm. say you know what you can do it mm. i'm sure you can become top of the class okay. all you have to do is look at your subjects this is where you have to improve on mm. my mom on the other side mm -hmm. does not want to understand okay her problem is you have to get you have to get the first position yeah you whatever formalities to. you're gonna use just <laughs> you know, be number one you just have to be there yeah, okay so um i i have had the opportunity to sit with my dad okay. and had conversations with him mm. at that tender age my dad went back to zambia when i was around 16. Mm -hmm. He went back to Zambia when I was about 14, 15 years. Okay. He went back to Zambia. Okay. So, but before he went, yeah. you know, I experienced my adolescence started, okay. you know, mm -hmm. the, the time he was here, puberty and everything, he was here with me. Okay. So my mom, from a culture she's from, yeah. they're not open to a whole lot of things. Yeah. She's, you know, she's stern, she's yeah. strict, she has her principles, you just have to do this. Yeah. You can't stay out till late, you can't be out till 10. Yeah. Uh, when you go out with the friend, your mm. friends for partying, mm. you have to be home by 9. Mm. But my dad, there yeah. was a point that he didn't understand. At 7, 7 p.m. you have to be in the house okay. for my dad. So when my mom say, when you tell my mom I want to go out and she says, go to your dad, mm -hmm. it means you are not going out. Wow. Yes, it means you're staying at okay, home. Okay. So, okay, but I, my dad was super, super protective. Okay. 
My mom was protective, but my dad was excessively protective, okay. overprotective. Okay. Um, but he was open to you learning. Mm. He was open to you taking on new initiatives. Mm. He liked to be involved in it as well. Okay. So we'll talk and have conversations. Mm. He will tell me, this is what is happening. Mm. This is what you're not supposed to do as a young girl growing up. Mm -hmm. I had those conversations with my dad. Mm. That was not something I openly had with my mom. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So growing up, you know, ex and I come through certain things, experience certain things. I felt like, oh, if my dad was here, this thing would not have happened. If my dad was here, this thing was, would not have happened. Mm. But again, I look and realize that it might be unfair on my mom's part because mm. she's also, okay. she, she's, up, she's up there. Okay. She's on her, her motherly game. Okay. And, and, but along the line, she realized that she's got um, a young lady, mm. a young girl mm. who was you know, open to all these different ideas, yeah. who wanted to learn, yeah. who wanted to grow. Mm. So when my dad went, she had to, you know, loosen up a bit and allow us to attend our organizational yeah, activities. Kind of yes, you okay. know, he, she had to do that for okay. me. Okay. When I took on my internship, there were days that I had to stay out late and cover, you know, concerts. Mm. You, though she would not sleep because okay. she would be sitting in the yeah, parlor which, no, waiting you, yeah. and she so would go out home, eh? and check which car brought me ah. yeah, and, and I was lucky that it was it, it was always the office car okay, okay. that brought me home That's beautiful, yeah. yeah so she realized that but I, again I can't just stay at late, mm. out and out late okay. that was something they all had in common okay. and even my friends I'm sure they're watching they know okay. I, I wasn't going out for clubbing mm. Um, because my mom would not understand me staying out at late. Okay. I, until till my this big age, mm -hmm. small big age, mm -hmm. I don't go out for clubbing wow. because I, I, I grew up accu accustomed to that, to that, to that you to know. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it's like my whole life is controlled mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Where I go, what I do, it's like I have that restriction everywhere. It's like my mom yeah. is watching yeah, me. Yeah. There's you know? a wall, you know. Yes, <laughs> there, there's always somewhere. that wall. Yeah. But I thank God it's in a good way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in a good way. Mm -hmm. And it it, it, it just manifests mm. every stage, through every stage of my life. Mm. So I would say I'm grateful to both of them mm. because either ways, mm. they've all inculcated a certain, yeah. you know, trait okay. in me. Mm. And they've all, you know, passed on certain skills. Mm. Both my parents are smart. Okay. My mom was super smart when she was going to school. Okay. My dad is, she, he's another, on another level. Yeah, yeah, it's a different gym. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's, he's a different, yeah. Mm. So it's like, yeah, I mean, alhamdulillah. And yeah. they've both tried to give us the best of life. Okay. You know, it's, it's a humble family, mm. quite a humble one. I mean, growing up, my dad gave us everything we wanted. Mm. You know, I, I count myself lucky again because from, in, from the neighborhood, mm. I was the only one who attended a private school. Mm. You know, and then because for him, that was very much important for him. His, okay. his children had to get the education and they had to get the best form of education and okay. he had to do it for, by himself. Okay. Even when he got sick, he never wanted yeah. people to pay for our fees for or for us to apply any scholarships. Mm. My dad never wanted that. Oh. He wanted to do, and that was why the sickness even got to a certain point because he always had had to check had. on himself yeah. but yeah. it got to a point where the family was expanding my dad forgot about his wealth and he was focused on his family yeah. and getting them yeah. that life he wanted to mm. a point that he had to break down mm. you know that the sickness had to overcome him mm. so my mom yeah. had to be there for yeah, us and him yeah, right yeah. so you know it, it's a, it's a it's a humbling experience. Mm. I would Deductively, say. would I be right if I said Daddy deserved the highest salute in that regard? I don't know. I, I <laughs> don't, think answer both. don't answer that. I don't want to put you. <laughs> no, no, no. I give them both. That's beautiful. For the those in <laughs> South Africa in the KwaZulu Natal language, I said to you, Sani Bunan in Zamzi, Geya Nimbingeleela. That thanks for supporting us here and greetings to you over here in South Africa. Somebody like a mighty that is following us right now. I say greetings to you here in the South Africa. You multi talented. You involved in the and activism and so to speak you would involve in young people's life in this country you on the radio mistress of ceremony mc so to speak uh, outside your parents that are, have served as your key motives all this life uh, yeah who are your method your mentors should i say outside your parents now ah um it's quite it's quite difficult because mm. um but also i'll give thanks to abdu okay if you've been following me often you realize that i lost him yes um, yes yes a few weeks picture. ago yeah and dark yeah, yeah, like yeah the dark one may his soul rest in perfect peace yeah, yeah yeah amen um you know i i, I looked up to looked up to him mm. in a lot of ways okay you know sometimes my friend my best friend were like you you sometimes paranoid. You just, just like Abdullah, he 
he actually molded us okay. in a certain way, especially in terms of our confidence, mm. in terms of who he wanted us to be, mm. just like how my parents were. Okay. You know, how my parents were in my life at that point. Okay. Growing up, Abdul mm. was like that as well when we went out. Okay of the house okay. when we were home. yes when we are in it because when i talk about organization it yeah. was always about ypm okay. until to a certain point i joined e5 okay. uh, educating for africa's future and i take on care for sexual and reproductive health okay. but ypm has been a constant mm. and abdul was that constant in my life mm. he was like a brotherly figure mm. so he was he he, he you know he mentored us mm. in a whole lot of different dimensions okay. professionally mm you know, molding our skills mm -hmm. on radio. Mm -hmm. he, w he gave us that platform mm -hmm. to express ourselves. Mm -hmm. He gave us tasks mm -hmm. as young people, as young as we were, mm -hmm. 17, 16, 18, mm -hmm. to organize events okay. and take charge, yeah. you know, to, to host the event. Mm -hmm. And I found myself in, a lot, in that situation a lot of times. Yeah, I've been seeing that you know, he pushed us. Yeah. Imagine being 17, 16, and you had meetings at YPM, mm -hmm. and Abdul wanted us to speak okay. at UNDP level. Okay. When wow. we had these high-level meetings yeah, with yeah. our partners. The challenging time. He wanted, yes. There were times he would talk, okay. but he wanted us to, to take be charge. Fronts, yeah. Yes. So you had, to, you, you had to be on your game. Okay. And he, he got that mm -hmm. out of us. Mm -hmm. So... Growing up, he was so much of a motivation. Mm, he he really, you know, he really affected our lives in a, in a, in a lot of positive ways. Mm. You know, the person we grew up becoming professionally as well outside our homes. Mm. You know, in these different platforms, we we were representing our organization and ourselves. Mm. You know, he he has really I, I learned a lot from him. But growing up as well, I saw women, okay. you know, on TV. Mm. I, w I wasn't really a keen follower of movies or okay. TV shows, okay. right? Mm. I didn't watch movies. Mm. My friends were always like, how could, how could you not? But yeah. no, mm. for some reason, mm. I don't know. Mm. But um, growing up, I saw women like, you know, Michelle. Okay. You know, I saw the Ellen Tube mm. and all these great women. different great women yeah. doing things, mm. doing their own things on their own. Yeah. And I had my own inspiration right in my house, my yeah. mom. Yeah. You know, looking at her, yeah. taking on, we were all girls, we are all girls. Yeah. yeah, I have a little brother, from the same dad, yeah, but he doesn't live here. Yeah. But my mom, she was in the middle of girls. Yeah. She was forced to be strong yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. When my dad left, when they went through the divorce and everything, mm -hmm. like, I looked at her, I look at her, yeah. and I saw a perfect human being. Yeah. And th that alone was strong, enough, strong word. yes, motivation mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Because she had to do, she had to go to extra mile. Yeah. You know, when my dad was strong and going, yeah. my mom had to quit a job because she did not even need it. She felt she did not need it at that point because my dad was giving her three times what she was getting yeah. a month. Yeah. So she felt she was in, it wasn't necessary. She had to be here for the kids. Yeah. So my dad w was no longer there physically. Okay. So my mom had to take on. So you realize she had to, that was where everything took a turn. Mm. So she had to start from scratch. Mm. So for me, growing up mm. and seeing her mm. go through all of life's struggles, mm. just to give us, you know, the best life my dad always wanted and mm. she wanted and we deserved, mm. you know, it, it, I, took, uh, I took cue from a lot of that mm. in a lot of ways, mm. from a lot of instances, mm. through a whole lot of times that she was supposed to be crying, but mm. she's too strong for mm. us. Mm. So I already had a strong motivation mm. and in my home mm. and from there i drew a mm. lot of inspiration from mm. do you have a story right here from her miss fatu el kamalushi here i call her the zambian game and that's the gz for you if you don't believe that she's very strong academically you are one of the reasons why this continent is not growing you have to believe that if you don't believe that i'm going to believe that for you uh quickly i come back to you uh you like look at your nation here the gambia a lot of young girls uh, at both your age, in the 25, 26, 30s, and uh, things are not going well for them. And they yeah. sit down at home, at home and feed them. Maybe if a man doesn't come in their lives, <laughs> it's zero for them. Mm -hmm. Here you are, just in your early 20s. Mm -hmm. But you've already climbed a very huge height in the academic echelon. <laughs> what do you have to say to these girls? I think um, it's just how society has just made everything look like for women, mm -hmm. that it is not possible mm -hmm. for you as a young girl, for you as a young woman, mm -hmm to be able to do things on your own and achieve that level of success. Mm. And uh, I think 
also our backgrounds really mm-hmm. count a lot okay because it, it would not be easy for a person to really understand this at a point yeah I think for me it was easy at a point because of like I explained yeah. where I come from yeah looking at my mom and I realized that a woman can do it on her own yeah, sure she's doing it all by herself mm. I too can do it yeah so and I, I joined a lot of organizations I mean the whole women empowerment for me started opening up mm. when I at this at this point for me it was not when I was you know 14 okay. 13 15 yeah. I know we were children we had rights yeah. and young people had right yeah. you know we had we, we we deserve to get access to basic needs yeah. we, we deserve to have this mm. we, we deserve to be protected yeah, I sure. know all of that but yeah. the whole women women empowerment yeah. Thing, open yeah. up to me okay. this point in my life mm-hmm. so getting to that point mm-hmm. is where the problem is mm-hmm. where do we start mm-hmm. making young girls believe mm-hmm. that they can achieve great things mm-hmm. on their own mm-hmm. start with the parents mm-hmm. start with the associations mm-hmm. we join mm-hmm. at this age my ki- my sisters you see them Adam and our day about fi- you know when they were 15 16 mm-hmm. I decided that they're going to join organizations mm-hmm. that were promoting women values okay, that okay. were talking about women empowerment mm-hmm. because at a point I don't want them to create certain mistakes that we mm-hmm. we had to you know mm-hmm. come across mm-hmm. along the way mm-hmm. so I think it, it, it is from that point parents need to give their children their god child mm-hmm. that education mm-hmm. the education is very important mm-hmm. imagine would there be any Muloshi if not for my education mm-hmm. and for the level of education education that I also attained mm. you know so I think it's about time that parents organizations people we grew up around with the things we expose our young girls to not having to make them understand not having to make them believe that mm. you have to get married at this certain age mm. because without a man it will be difficult for you to achieve this level of success mm. without a man you can't live in a huge bungalow That's without a, a man yeah. you can't drive a car mm-hmm. i'm driving a car mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and i bought it for my for, for myself i yeah. bought it for my own money mm. i'm saying it people are listening no yes. man gave me that money okay but you know Growing up, it, it, it goes to a certain point that you would have to realize that for yourself. Mm. It gets to a certain point. Mm. And it's not always the best of exp- experiences as young girls mm. growing up in mm. such a culture and tradition that, mm. makes you, that makes you think in this kind of box. Okay. Okay. So it comes down to, you know, like I said, the families we find ourselves mm. in, mm. trying to make young girls understand that they can dream on their own. And mm. it's okay for them to, to believe that they have to attain that level of education because mm. they need to get certain things. Mm. They can buy houses on their own and they can be bosses in their workplaces. Mm. Mm. Not because when they don't have a man beside them, they can't do it. Mm. I am here. Mm. I'm not married. Mm. Yeah, my little sister is married, but I am not. Mm. Listen. So it's attainable. Yeah. It's possible with that education, with that belief in yourself. And the fact that you have to have values mm. as, as a person as mm. a, not only as a woman mm. but as a person yeah. and for me setting that goal was very important for me mm. I realized that every step along along the line mm. in my life mm. I had to write a goal down okay you know at a point I realized that I didn't have a choice I had to get a degree okay because of yeah my parents yeah. I, I don't have a choice I have to mm. also I had to write it down when I was in high school that this is something that I had to get okay. so I had to work towards that okay Getting the um, the degree, I ha- I need to have a job. Mm. Also, at a point, I need to I want to have my own car. Mm-hmm. I want to buy myself a house. Mm-hmm. So when I got the when I got the full time appointment at, at GRTS, mm-hmm. I said to myself, I live far and I struggle every day going to work. Mm-hmm. I need to get a car. Yeah. And I started working towards that. Okay. And in working towards it, mm. I got it. Mm. Now I'm thinking about something else, mm. and I'm working towards that, mm. and I'm going to get it. Mm. So we have to set goals for ourselves. Mm. And that thing about when you don't have a man beside you, it's a lazy you can't. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lazy it's argument. such a lazy that must argument. Must be thrown in a dustbin of history. No, honestly, mm. honestly, you just. I mean, how do they get it? Mm. They walk and they, prove themselves. Sure. So you walk you and prove yourself that. too. Mm. I mean, I don't. I don't just want to say a lot of things, but in my job, I started as an intern. Mm. 
eventually I got appointed Im immediately. Yeah. My I, okay, I started as an intern, volunteered for almost a year. Yeah. Because also I wasn't in a rush to get a job because I was going to school. Yeah. But along the line, they realized that oh, what is there to wait for? She's able to do the job. Yeah. Give her a chance. She gave. They gave me the chance yeah. to be on contract. Mm. I had to work twice harder. Okay. You know to prove myself. To prove a point. But. In that process as well, I decided that even though I want this so badly, I'm going to be myself. Okay. You know, I'm going to be myself. And if I get it, yes, if I don't, let me fail by yeah. being myself. Mm -hmm. But I want to be accepted in my authenticity. Mm -hmm. And that I did. Mm -hmm. Eventually, my contract ended. I got appointed as a full-time staff. Mm -hmm. And now my designation has even changed within one year. Mm -hmm. So I think young girls need to work extra harder. But also the people they grew up around, mm -hmm. the parents, mm -hmm. the mo the mothers, the dads, the sisters, mm -hmm. you know, the elder generation, as all the generation as well, need to be able to make them understand that you can do this. Because at that young age, mm -hmm. you need a mentor. You need someone to guide you, mm -hmm. you know. We've all been there. And yeah. the guidance is such an important Very pillar. Important, yeah in our life. So yeah. for me, I try to be that for my little sisters, yeah. you know, though sometimes they see me as a little bit protect, overprotective okay. because I'm, I'm serious about what they post on you, their you, status. You must have stolen that from mommy anyway, because she used to be <laughs> seated in the dark. Yeah, and yeah, you honestly, but she wasn't censoring my phone okay. anyway. So you're doing that now? Um, yeah, but, but I don't censor their phone because I respect their privacy, okay. but I'm very much, you know, keen about friends they take on and just associations that they they put themselves yeah, in that's true, that's i'm true. so much conscious because about that because your association that. determines your destination uh, yes yeah. i i am so much conscious about that okay things they post mm. online mm. their their status i am conscious about that okay you know and not like to, in a way that you don't have to be free to watch things mm. and express your views but I feel you have to be molded in a certain way, maybe mm. because my parents molded me okay. and that way. And for them, that is no longer around. Okay. You know, we have to step up a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So it's good that we're able to mentor them mm. in that stage mm. because they need it. They cannot know it on their own. Mm. They need that mentorship. Mm. They need that education. They need that guidance. Mm. And we, you have to be open to learning on your own as well. Mm. But it's possible. Wow, the story is getting beautiful. We're driving close to the end of this conversation here, but quickly, I'll come back to you. Uh, do you have any regrets growing up up to this level? Have you had a story that you have a regret about? No, I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say I have regrets um, to there, a there, point there, there, that... There's a, there's a little struggle in answering this question. Do you have a regret? I no, because again. maybe growing up, there were things that you know, we, we forget or mm. things that we've been through. But mm. for me, I believe that everything that I've been through okay. was supposed, was, was meant to meant happen. To and everything that happened along the line, at least for me, mm -hmm. molded me to a so better kind of person. You, today. Okay. you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sum of my choices. Mm. The reason why I am here today is because of the choices I made. Okay the decisions I take, the situation and circumstances I found myself mm. in, mm. and whether they were bad mm. choices or bad situations, at a point, I, I was able to use those things mm. to mold myself mm. into a better person mm. and to a more experienced mm. young lady. So for me, every other thing that happened along the way mm. kind of opened up mm. my eyes and widened my or, or horizon, right, so, okay. my level of awareness. Okay to what this world is really mm. about, that the road is never going to be smooth. Mm. And when we were in high school, they told us these things. Mm. So for me, it's about, okay, you have to take the, the right steps. Mm. You have to take the right decisions. Mm. You have to make the best choices. But sometimes you, are you think you, may, you are making the best choices, yeah. but life in itself takes a toll on you. Yeah. And you have to accept that for yeah. what it is. Yeah. Take the situation and make it to something meaningful okay. for yourself yeah. and at least for those around you. Yeah. So for me, I, I never allowed a, a, a situation to change my destiny for me. Okay. I've along the line decided to take my life into my own, into my hands because I believe that my destiny is determined by me, the choices I make and, and, and like, like I told, the choices I make and how I determine, how I allow the circumstances to determine the, the outcome. Mm -hmm of the choices I made. Mm -hmm. So I think everything in life that happened along the line, mm -hmm. some could have been revert to, you know, avoided, yeah. but some things happened because you never saw them coming yeah. and they were supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you mm -hmm. to, to take all those different experiences mm -hmm. into a positive light okay. and allow yourself 
to grow in that mm -hmm. in that positivity okay. you know even though sometimes we all break down mm -hmm. we all cry at mm -hmm. a point mm -hmm. there are times that we feel like this should not have happened mm -hmm. why me mm -hmm. but that is it, it's it's sometimes a turning point for yeah, you that's true. and you have to make best use of that moment mm -hmm. to reflect and see what best can come out of it. That's and for me, it's been working. That's beautiful. This is a motivational platform here on Symbian's VIP Magazine, VIP TV here in the game. I remain Tony Mikhail Howard, talks to the very responsibility of inspiring young people. We're here with all, uh, arguably, Gambia's finest female journalist, Fatu mm -hmm. Elika Maloshi. Uh, we're driving quickly to the end uh, yeah. in minutes, mm -hmm. so to speak. You, you've told us two many beautiful stories about <laughs> your life. In the, in the midst of all these stories, what's your most memorable moment in life? that you can recall. You see, this one is very distinctive. I can't forget about it. I even want a repeat of it. <laughs> I think um, that one, that one, um, you know, thing that always comes to my head, mm. especially when I'm down, mm. you know, especially when I have to write about my story in class, yeah. you know, feature writing, is, you know, the times that I had both my parents beside me and when I closed from school, my dad, had to buy us ice cream mm. and and it's like he had to get me that ice cream yeah every day like the driver it's a must he mm. had to get me that mm. ice cream mm. otherwise i will not go home yeah. and the early morning hawks he mm. gives me every oh. morning oh. like when i go and to greet and say hi to daddy he makes sure he hugs me tight mm. Mm. that's beautiful so like for me mm. every time that i feel i feel low mm. and i feel down those moments come to me. Mm. The moments that my dad will all, always just come and just hug me tight mm. and tells me I love you. Mm. And you know, he, my middle name, Elika, mm. after he, he is big sister. Okay. So he, he, he's like, he's so, he loves me a lot. Mm. And I, I was, I'm like a daddy's girl. Okay. So I've been through a lot with him, yeah. you know. So I think about my mom memories with him mm. and it's so soothing. Mm. And each time I'm down, each time work is overwhelming mm. or things happen, mm. I think about all those beautiful things mm. my dad tells me mm. and the fact that my mom always has had to emphasize that you know you were smart you're mm. smart you're smart you're smarter you're smarter than mm. this you can do this yeah. you know those compliments mm. that my parents give me mm. and gave me when i was much younger mm. they always tick mm. they've, they've stuck in my head mm. and every time i'm forced to think about those mm. things mm. whenever i am down and okay. those are the most beautiful moments in my life okay that's beautiful before we take leave of you uh quickly being a very beautiful experience sitting with you on this conversation here what are your final words um, I would just say that uh, let's all keep pushing, mm -hmm. especially, especially young girls. Mm -hmm. I know there are a lot, at, a lot of them out there mm -hmm. who are watching this probably, mm -hmm. and I've also had a lot of them who would reach out to me on Facebook, my social media platforms, mm -hmm. you know, telling me they're proud of me, they look up to me, mm -hmm. they need words of advice, yeah. you know, especially on how to become a journalist mm -hmm. and how to get to this point. Mm -hmm. And all the time I tell them that just be yourself mm -hmm. and be open to learn. Mm -hmm. Don't think you know too much that you can't learn from other people besides mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm open to that. Mm -hmm. You know, even when you think, oh, some, some person is giving you advice that you think you know better, mm -hmm. take it. You yeah. never know. It's yeah. up to you to see it. You might just need it sometime You might just future. need it sometime in the future. And I think for me, it, ha it has been doing me. Mm -hmm and not being afraid mm. to commit mistakes, mm. not being afraid to take on new challenges, mm. and just exploring myself. Mm. And it is in that exploration that I meet people like you, mm. who think I, w I was uh, you know, good yeah. of a moderator, and mm. you thought it, I should moderate your event. Yeah. Somebody else saw me in that event, mm. and you know, saw, my, uh, you know, saw for my service. Yeah, that was in 2017. 2017, yeah. and a lot happened in that 2017. Yeah, it was more yeah. like a turning point, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it has been like that. Mm. Somebody seeing the work and recommending it to somebody else. Sometimes yeah. I don't even have to lobby for things. Yeah. A lot of times I see myself doing or taking on certain contracts yeah. that I never even lobbied or applied for. Yeah. It has been through the hard work. Mm. And that's because along the line, you're not afraid of exploring yourself. Mm. You're not af afraid of being the true version of yourself. Mm. So for me, it's about being me. Mm. Role models are very important. Mm. It is good for us to look up to people, to yeah. learn from them, to yeah. take on good practices. Yeah. But I want to be blueprint. myself. Yes. Honestly, I don't want someone to say, oh, Malushi, 
She looks like this person mm -hmm. she, she's copying. Mm -hmm. Muloshi mm -hmm. is Muloshi. One philosopher says that the best part of being me is that I am not you. You, mm -hmm. exactly. Muloshi is Muloshi. And mm -hmm. that brings me to what my boss always say. Mm -hmm. Saying oh, that, oh Muloshi, you are just Muloshi. Mm -hmm. That is why you are just Muloshi. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah, Muloshi just is just yourself, Muloshi. Yeah. So I think young girls should take on that. Okay, okay Muloshi in inspires you. Mm -hmm. Nice, be yeah. inspired to do great mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. you know. I thought I would never thought it would be possible if somebody told me like five, six years ago you would be here. Never. Mm -hmm. But it is possible because I dare to dream that this far. Mm -hmm. So be yourself. Mm -hmm. Along the line, do not forget your values. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a very yes, you see me like a modern girl, mm -hmm. but I have this I was brought up in a traditional home, so I have I have my values that as a person. Idea, yeah. Yes, as a person. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to have that as well. Mm -hmm. It's okay to explore. Mm -hmm. It's okay to commit mistakes. Mm -hmm. But it's okay for you to be just yourself. Mm -hmm. Make mistakes while being yourself mm -hmm. rather than be praised for being mm -hmm. someone else. Mm -hmm. And along the line, it will manifest. It will show and people will realize that you are not interesting anymore. Mm -hmm. But while exploring yourself, the mm -hmm. true version of yourself, you ne never expire. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's beautiful. It's been a very beautiful experience. They will find to Elika Molushi that remains Tony Mikhail Howard, and this is the most traditional platform here that comes to with on CBN's VIP magazine, VIP TV here in the game. Beautiful experience. We'll have you here. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. a billion. You know, catch you some other time. <laughs> it's a pleasure always. Yeah. If you like photos, man, it's a great time here. Bye bye. Supersonics Money Transfer is giving you an unbeatable offer this Tobaski. Your family and friends can now send you monies from the whole of Europe, US, Canada and Switzerland for absolutely free. Yay! Yes! This Tabaski enjoy our safe, fast, reliable and convenient money transfer service with the largest payout network in the Gambia at zero transfer charges. So your family and friends wouldn't have to worry about transfer charges when sending you monies from Europe, USA, Canada and Switzerland. This Tabaski. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Support your own. Tabaski just got better with Supersonics Money Transfer.